Hey friends, happy Monday morning, and uh, I guess it's still Monday motivation, Monday discussion, uh, Monday whatever. Uh, we're going to try something different today. You see I'm uh, backing out of a parking space. I'm in the vehicle. I just got done my workout. It's Friday, so just a few days before you're watching this. Uh, I did not have a Monday video planned, uh, or a Wednesday video planned for this week, and I was just going to do without for the first time and at least a year and a half, I think, I've had a Monday and a Wednesday video. Because I think I did it all last year for Beat Up Fit. And I'm pretty sure I've done it all year so far in 2023. Uh, I just didn't have anything to, you know, kind of queued up and busy. And, you know, the want to ain't there uh, for not, not necessarily making YouTube videos, but just kind of a lot of stuff. You know, everything's doldrum, summertime, hot, everything's expensive and so forth. But there was something that uh, kind of occurred through the week that I think gave me a talking point. We're going to do this kind of a, a little different, I mean, actually very different than we've ever done on the channel. We're going to have uh, this Monday video here where we're going to talk. I am uh, on my way to Target. And then Wednesday, you'll see the hunt and then kind of the second portion of the talk. So this is all a talk Monday motivation, Monday discussion. Uh, and then on Wednesday, you'll see a hunt. And then I think... On that Sunday, we go to see Spider-Verse, maybe? I'm not sure where Life of the Dubs is as I'm filming this. Uh, but the thing I wanted to talk about is, uh, is this all too much? Has collecting become too much? Uh, lots of discussions, and I've had a lot of discussion with friends and people about the collecting bubble burst bursting. Um, I actually think the collecting bubble has burst if you compare to where things were in 2020, when everybody had was at home and had some discretionary money and was getting COVID relief monies and so forth, uh, things like cards and graded stuff and Pokemon, they're all going at unbelievably high prices in the aftermarket, and they're not going for that anymore. That doesn't mean people aren't collecting. I don't think the average person is collecting as much as they used to. Um, but prices have certainly come down in the aftermarket, which is a reflection. Uh, but this, that's, this is not what today is about. The topic today more so is uh, just broadly for those of us that are still collect, that are you know always a collector. We just did our collecting good as a collecting bad. And I think through this year, we're going to have follow-up discussions on some of those points. And the thing I wanted to talk about uh, this week is just how many products get solicited or come out at the same time from multiple companies. Now, before we get into it too much, I understand that each individual company is their own business and has to run their business to pay their employees, to pay their expenses, and to make their necessary profit margins uh, first. Like, they are not worried about the fans very first. They can't be, that's not what business is. You worry about your revenue and your profitability and certainly pleasing your customers, but while maintaining revenue and profitability. That's, that's just the way it works. Um, at work, right? That's work. We, we want to call them companies there at work. And when we go to work, the, probably the thing you care about most of all is, can I get paid more? Period. That's just kind of the way it is. Can I get better benefits? Can I get what a better discount? Whatever. Right? So, uh, I, I speak with the overview of that. So here's what's happened this week that made me want to talk about it. Uh, within a matter of basically four days, three days, uh, the, the new Mythic Legion's All-Star 6 Wave went up for pre-order. The all-in for that is $500 plus shipping. A great wave. Love it. Lots of awesome stuff. Brand new parts and figures in there. The new G.I. Joe HasLab Firefly... Firefly, Dragonfly, helicopter, six inch scale, went up with shipping. I mean, it's 279, I think, plus shipping. That's over $300 shipping in Texas. Uh, I'm a Hasbro Pulse member, so I don't have to pay shipping, but let's just say 300 bucks. Premium Bandai put up Android 20 for pre order. Uh, that's another like $90. Uh, so that, in and of itself, is almost a thousand dollars, nine hundred bucks, and closer to a thousand when you factor in shipping costs for some of those things. Um, 
in just a matter of a couple days. Three different companies, three different lines I like. Dragon Ball, G.I. Joe Classified, Mythic Leeches, all lines I collect. That's a big hit to the wallet, and none of that stuff will be here in the next year. And so I didn't pre-order any of it right away, actually. For the first time, I took several days and really thought about if I was going to keep doing this, like keep putting so much money into stuff. So I went and I looked. Just from those companies, Premium Bandai, Mythic Legions, directly from the Four Horsemen, and Hazlab. I have like $8,000 of stuff that I have already paid for. Most of it over a year old, some of it two years old. Now you add in Super 7, you add in NACA, you add in non-refundable deposits on certain things from like Big Bad or whoever, and you get over $10,000 of money that other companies have had for a long time from me with no product. Now, this is not to say that I don't think they'll deliver that product. I know they will. I know they all will. I know they all will. Those are all reputable companies. Will it look exactly like what I thought I paid for? Probably not in some cases. Will it look better? Probably in some cases. But that's a lot of money. Now, we live in this era where inflation's blowing up and interest rates are high, which means if I had taken that $10,000 and put it in one of my good savings accounts, I could have probably made another six, seven, eight hundred, maybe even a thousand more dollars in, in myself, in my own interest, if I had put all that money in a savings account instead of giving it to another company. And that's the pre-order model. And with a lot of that stuff, with the Horseman, for instance, if you don't buy that $500 set of figures and you want them a year later, you're going to pay $800 for that set of figures. So you go backwards. You go backwards. For things like HasLab, you're going to pay a lot bigger markup. You're not going to get them. Premium Bandai, same thing. It'll double in price, triple in price. So that's your opportunity to get them to put the money down. Now you combine that with companies like NECA, who in March, just two months ago, three months ago now, dropped 15 Ninja Turtles products all at once at Target. And the reason I'm on my way to Target today is because they just showed like another seven that are coming out right now for a summer hall of fun type event, whatever. And that's silly. And it's another five or 600 bucks if you, if you find all those and choose to buy them. And that's just collecting NECA Ninja Turtles, G.I. Joe Classified, Mythic Legions, and Dragon Ball figures. That's just four lines. Just four. And you get into that kind of money all at once. Now, when I say is it too much, it's uh, too much. We would all agree it's too much. I think everybody would agree. If at the beginning of your collecting journey, whenever that was, if you look at what you spend on action figures today and you say, am I spending too much? You would say 100% <laughs> yes. I would have never thought the day I would spend, you know, $500 in a month on action figures, uh, whatever the case may be. And it's Comic-Con season, which means it's going to get worse. NECA is going to have San Diego Comic-Con pre-orders. Uh, when I look at myself and my family, all three of us collect. So I have to pay attention to all the Sailor Moon stuff and all the Demon Slayer stuff and all the My Hero Academia stuff and so forth and so on. And all those companies that produce product from that all drop stuff in similar huge batches. And that's why I started with the preface of they have to make money. They're a business. The days that we used to remember Hasbro or Mattel dropping one wave of figures or whatever, they also make a whole bunch of other stuff. But the Four Horsemen make Mythic Legions, Cosmic Legions, Figure Obscura. If they're not selling action figures, they're not making money. There's no other way they make money. NECA primarily, if they're not selling action figures, they're not making money. So they have to constantly be getting us to sell. And so you look at it and you go, well, what's my, what's my budget? How much am I willing to spend? What is too much? And I think we're there. I trimmed way back. It's almost three years ago, but I trimmed way back. And that's because I was buying almost every hot toy and then every other six scale figure. Plus I collected every SH figure art, every Mayfex. This is not talking about Mayfex get put out, has now put out eight figures in four weeks that you had to, the Ami Ami comes calling or Big Bad Toy Store, or Toy Co, whoever you order them for. That's another six, $700. All at once, this is all happening in a, in a two month period, thousands of dollars. And so you say, all right, well that's, the, you don't have to have them. No, no, we don't have to have any of this. 
So the, the, the response of, well, you don't have to have it, is true, but is also invalid because we don't have to have any of this. You don't have to have any of this. Collectors collect and you want it and you decide you want it and you go get it. If, if things really came down to it, could we all probably cut our collection completely out to pay for medical bills, food? Of course we could. I think almost everybody could do that, right? But it's not, it's not that. It's that you want to collect. You do have discretionary money, but you don't want all of it like this to go. You want to do other things. The other thing that got me thinking is in our household over the previous month, we all three have been playing Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. That game was $10 more expensive than other Switch games. And people were freaking out. Oh my goodness, this is gonna reset the price point. $10 more, $69.99 is how much that game cost. I don't think that's a lot for a video game, but video game people think it's a lot. $69.99. And you compare that to $300 for a helicopter that admittedly looks super cool. But, almost assuredly, almost assuredly, you're going to play with a few times, put on your shelf, and never look at it again. In our household, there has been probably almost 400 hours spent on Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom in the past month. I've got more enjoyment. I've, I've played over 150 hours. I bought the game three times. And no issue with that. So all three of us have a copy. We can play whenever we want to. We don't have to wait for someone else to play. We all have a Switch. No issues with that. So for that 210 bucks, my whole, uh, my fiance and our daughter have all had hundreds of hours of entertainment. We have not had hundreds of hours of entertainment from our action figures, maybe total, ever. The rare exceptions may be things like Legions that we're starting to customize and spend more time with. But like a G.I. Joe class, so I figured that, again, I love that line. I get it out. I open the box. I put it on my shelf. And sometimes I never look at it again. It may be five minutes for $24.99 plus tax. That is a lot of people in an open cage Jeep right beside me. There's like seven kids getting out of this Jeep. So it made me rethink about value and is it too much when I'm getting so much fun out of a video game, which is tremendous if you haven't played Tears of the Kingdom. It's excellent. And I just had to pay for that once. And you know what? That The last time they released the Zelda game was seven years ago, and that was $59.99, and I played that for hundreds of hours. And so the value proposition of this really is um, interesting to me. And I'm trying to cut back to more and more things. Uh, Super 7 is a company that I've enjoyed their figures, but I have not pre-ordered the most recent Thundercats from Super 7. I did not pre-order any of the Silverhawks or the Power Rangers. I originally had them pre-ordered, but I canceled them. Uh, Simpsons I was interested in, Animaniac, I canceled all those before they ever came out. And I've looked at the Silverhawks several times and thought about it, but A, I don't have any more space, but B, I just can't keep committing so much money with inconsistent release times where they all come calling at once, and I'm not willing to put that much money up front anymore. I just don't think I can do it. So, uh, is it too much? Is it too much? Even if you just collect Marvel Legends, even if you just collect Marvel Legends, I think they've had a new pre-order every single week for like four, five, six straight weeks. They've had all these five packs and four packs. They keep coming. And Hasbro's a company that makes other stuff, plenty of other stuff. They make plenty of money off of other things. So is it too much? What do you think? How are you dealing with this? I don't collect six scale figures anymore. Some of those are getting to be four or $500 for a Hot Toys Iron Man. Well, I do collect six scale, that's wrong. I don't collect Marvel and Star Wars Hot Toys. Those have gotten so expensive. I've stopped buying statues. Those have gotten so expensive. And that's not even factoring how expensive shipping has gotten on those big items. I don't know what to do, genuinely. I'm having this conversation with my phone, but with all of you, because I love a lot of those things. G.I. Joe Classified, I'm very close to bailing on. I'm just very close to bailing on. I think my phone has slightly started to tilt. Apologize for that. Uh, and I'm a one loose, one in box, and I still have. I, you know, I bought two of the Haslab helicopter, so that's another 300 bucks. And it's just gotten to be too much for me. 
And so what am I going to give up? Am I going to give up the things with the family? No. I'm not going to give up the anime stuff because we enjoy doing that together. Am I going to go to Just Mythic Legions? It's possible. It is possible. But I enjoy Game of Thrones stuff, Walking Dead stuff. I enjoy the Ninja Turtle stuff. I've, I'm almost giving up on NECA Turtles. It's hard. So let me know your thoughts this Monday morning as you think about this and you think about your own spending, your own budgeting, uh, where are you making your cuts? Um, you know, this is not the fault of anything, right? It's not a company's fault. Again, they're just trying to make money. That's what they do. They're a business and they're all making product we like, but how do you do this? How do you, you know, and you say, oh, we'll just collect one line. Most people don't collect just one line. That's just not where bread is buttered, right? Most people collect multiple things. They, they branch out. They get this. They get that. And I think if people stop collecting multiple things, lots of these lines are going to be in trouble. So uh, let me know your thoughts. I mean, it's it's just been a, it's been a challenging six weeks. On top of that, we've had $5,000 in car repairs. Uh, and people, you know, we are not rich. We do well. I, I mean, I've worked hard. I've got a lot of years of experience. I have a lot of certifications. I've got a master's degree. Natalie has a lot of certification. We, we, we work hard for our money. We're not independently wealthy by any means, right? Everything is more expensive and we have to budget and try to find a way to make it work and enjoy the things we want to enjoy. We've gone to less shows, less vacations, all of that because our discretionary spending is, is drying up. Uh, so I'm just curious this Monday. Let me know what you think. Uh, I am now going to go inside Target and you'll see that on Wednesday. Talk to you then.